G'day, welcome back to the channel. I want to talk today about Neo. No, not that Neo. The DJI Neo, the new miniature little drone that's taken the world by storm. Fantastic piece of kit. The intelligence in this thing is amazing. The AI capabilities, the, the tracking abilities, just blew me away when I saw it. I mean, it's a bit like the X Hover, but they seem to have made it much cheaper and in a smaller package. And you'd think, what's to complain about the DJI? Now, DJI seem to have forgotten to send me one, as they do, <laughs> so I'm not reviewing it. But I want to talk about some of the issues that the, the Neo raises in the modern drone world. Now, but first of all, I will talk about why I almost bought one but decided not to. Now, I looked at the reviews, and when I first looked at the specs, I thought, this is just something I would really like to have. It's got this tracking thing. So as a sole operator, when it comes to creating videos, I don't have someone to film me. I don't have anyone to operate a camera. Arnie, all he ever does is spot for me, he doesn't do any help with the production. So I would find it incredibly valuable and useful to have a little camera that would follow me along, get some B-roll footage, and I could do, you know, uh, moving while I'm walking along, I could talk to the camera and it would follow in front of me. All the things that the, the Neo is supposed to do so very well. Oh, that's brilliant. This would be a fantastic additional piece of kit for my production stuff. And I, I looked at it not so much as a drone, but as a camera as a flying camera and that's where the disappointment set in because I looked at some of the footage that this thing produces and it's god it's awful it is now remember DJI bought Hasselblad Hasselblad is one of the world's what was one of the world's leading camera manufacturers a prestigious name in the camera industry and you when you look at DJI's other offerings you know the mini series and the Phantom and the Mavics they all have pretty damn good cameras so you would expect, especially look back at the drones they released, you know, in 2019, 2020, cameras, pretty damn good, um, even by today's standards. So you would expect that if DJI's rocking out a new drone designed to be a flying camera, the camera's going to be pretty good. <laughs> I'm afraid it's anything, but it is the worst video quality I've seen in a very, very long time from anyone. In fact, it's, it looks like one of those cheap, you know, $49 drones that they sell on Timu for a dollar. It, it's terrible, absolutely awful. They claim it's 4K, and although there may be 4K in terms of pixels, it's not 4K resolution. What I think is happening here is they may have a 4K sensor in that camera, but because there's only a single axis gimbal, when the drone is rocking from side to side, obviously they have to have some room around the, the image on the sensor to basically reposition and crop and everything to make it look steady. And like if it's flying in a crosswind, it's on a 45 degree angle sometimes, so the image isn't falling squarely on the sensor. So the sensor has to be much bigger than the image in order that they can trim out the other bits and rotate it around so it looks stable. This electronic stabilization requires, always requires cropping in on the sensor. And when you need to do it at 45 degree angles, you've got to crop in an awful lot. So if they've got a 4K sensor, they've cropped in maybe 50%. So they're probably running with you know, 2K of the sensor area. So then they've cropped in that much. And then they blow it back up to 4K once they've stabilized it all. But of course, a 2K image blown up to 4K looks a little bit blurry. So what they've done is they've applied some sharpening and the sharpening is ruining it. It's making the thing look horrible and cartoony. And then of course, because this is for Instagram and, and TikTok and all that, and Facebook, they've saturated the hell out of the colors. So the colors look awful. And now because they don't have an SD card in this little Neo, it is all stored on internal memory they've compressed the shit out of it. So that when it's, if you're flying through dappled light, such as in a forest or, or over a, a, um, pebbles or a, 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 some, some kind of ground, which has got a lot of detail, then you get all the, the H264, H265 compression artifacts, the little blockiness that occurs. It looks awful. I can never use any of that footage in my videos because I'd be ashamed. I'd be ashamed to have footage like that. So yeah, I, when I first saw the specs, I was really enthusiastic. I nearly got my, my card out and bought one. And then when I saw the video on the reviews, I said, no way, because I know, I know full well that in a few months, we're going to see the Neo 2 or the Neo Plus or the Neo Platinum or the Neo Pro, and it will have a much better camera. It'll be much better. It'll be what the Neo should be now, what, you know, but it'll be actually fulfilling the promise of being a good, decent camera. So I might buy one when that happens, because as I say, great B-roll camera, fantastic. I could put that to great use. But the video today, as I say, it's not a review of the Neo, because I don't have one, and DJI, ever since I said that their FPV drone 
was a potato. <laughs> I've fallen off the bottom of their Christmas card list. They don't want bad reviews. They, only, they don't want real reviews. They just want people selling their product under the guise of a review. So what I want to make this video about is the, the impact that the NEO is going to have on regulations, because the regulations are not set up for a craft like this. One of the big selling features of the NEO is that it is super small, it is super lightweight, it is super safe. Fully shielded props with little guards on the top. You, you can't hurt yourself. You know, it's, it's even a little bit too big, unlike a, you know, some of the tiny whoops. Um, it's a little bit too big to be a choking hazard. So it's, it's the safest drone probably ever made. And surprisingly enough, it doesn't really comply with the regulations. How can that be? It can be so safe but non-compliant. Well, let me tell you. The regulations we have, with the FAA regulations, CAA regulations, they all operate on the premise that we have an operator of a drone. Someone standing there with a controller who can move the drone around. So if an aeroplane, for example, comes along, you can land the drone. We can get out of the way. In fact, the FAA regulations, part 107.37, says that you must always give way to manned air traffic. If you're flying an unmanned aircraft, you must always give way to manned aircraft. In New Zealand, the CAA regulations, part 101.213, says that unmanned aircraft must always yield right of way to manned aircraft. Now, if you've got a craft like the NEO, and you've, you've seen the reviews by now, I assume, you, know, you put it on your hand, you push the button, takes off, flies around you, getting video, or it follows in front of you or behind you, and it's fully autonomous. You don't have any controls. You can't, you know, change its path at all because it's just following, it's just tracking. So you cannot comply with those parts of the regulations. You cannot guarantee that you can get that drone out of the way of a manned aircraft, should one come along. So you can't be compliant with part 107 or part 101 in New Zealand. So it's, in theory, it's a drone that cannot be compliant with rules. So how can you fly it legally? It's a question, isn't it? Now, we know, practically, we know, it is so damn safe that it doesn't matter. You could throw that thing in the mouth of a 747 or 737 engine and it would just spit it out the back and there'd be no damage to anybody. But that's not the way the rules work. The rules assume, we know, that any, if, if a drone gets even within spitting distance of a manned aircraft, everybody in that plane's going to die because reasons. We know that the rules, that the drone regulations we have are based not on risk but on paranoia. <laughs> and paranoia is rampant. So it's going to become difficult for regulators to deal with the NEO. It gets even worse when you think about it because this drone is being billed as something you'd slip in your pocket. And when you go out and you do your everyday things, you whip it out, and where you might take a selfie with your smartphone, you'll use your Neo and you'll get a, an orbit or you'll get a, a, you know, a follow shot or a drony or whatever, because it just fits in your pocket. It's so light and easy and you don't need to use any transmitters or goggles or smartphones. Brilliant. It's a, it's a flying camera. Brilliant. And so the problem is that there are many places that you can't legally fly a drone. For example, you go to a big sports event at a big stadium. Probably there's an exclusion zone around that stadium for the duration of the event. Yet how many people do you think are going to take their Neo, they'll be up there in the stands and they'll just put on their hand, push the button, it'll fly away, get a lovely drone shot showing them in the, in the stadium, and then it'll fly back and they can, you know, put it back in their pocket. Illegal. Breaks the rules. You can risk thousands of dollars in fines for doing that because you're flying a drone in a no-fly zone. The same goes maybe you go out to the car park or you're, you're in the car park before you go in and you want to get some footage for your TikTok of you and your friends walking into the stadium so you have the drone follow on behind. Illegal. Under the current rules, totally illegal. You're not allowed to fly a drone in the vicinity of the stadium during the sports event. Maybe you go to a rock concert or something else and you want to get some great footage of, of you know, yourself enjoying yourself in the crowd there and you get your little neo and you do an orbit. Oh, illegal! Usually these concerts have exclusion zones and whatever. Illegal. So many people are going to risk huge fines by using the little toy drone because these people are not drone flyers. They don't know about the, you know, part 107. They don't know about regulations. They don't know about the, you know, all the rules. And, and should they? Should they even need to know about the rules? Because when it's fully autonomous, this thing flies to a maximum altitude of 15 meters, which in American money is about three and a half acres. Not very high at all, 20 feet. So you're not likely to encounter a manned aircraft. If you do encounter a manned aircraft at 20 feet within you know, 30 feet of yourself, you've got bigger problems than a little plastic drone. <laughs> you're in trouble. And so do the regulations, should, the, should the regulations apply to this drone in its autonomous mode? I don't think they should, because we already have plenty of rules. We have rules, the police can come along. If you're endangering somebody with anything, be it a drone, um, a, a wet noodle, uh, you know, an axe, a gun, whatever, the police can come along and arrest you for endangering, endangerment. If you endanger the public, you, you can be arrested for that. You don't, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a drone makes no difference. So the police can still stop you from doing things that might endanger other people when you're flying a drone. They don't need drone regulations to do that. So we don't need drone regulations for these little autonomous drones. They, they should be, in my opinion, they should be totally um, exempted from all the drone regulations. 
because we've got, we got, you know, there's evidence to prove this. We go to Canada. If we go up to Canada, they've had a no prescriptive rule sort of situation in place for sub 250s. If you fly a sub 250 gram drone in Canada, there are no rules telling you what to do. The only thing that says, don't kill people, don't damage their stuff, and stay out of areas where you shouldn't fly. Those are the only rules for sub 250 in Canada. Yet we don't see legions of Canadians being killed by tiny drones. We don't see you know, millions of dollars in property being damaged by tiny drones being flown recklessly. No, it doesn't happen because these things are intrinsically so safe. It doesn't matter. People can't cause much in the way of mayhem. And if they do, well, there's other laws. There's laws, you know, as I say, endangerment, things like that, nuisance. You can arrest people for any number of reasons. Just because they're using a drone doesn't give them exemption from all the normal rules or laws of the land. So I think something like the NEO in its autonomous mode should be exempt from drone rules. But at the moment, it's most certainly not. Therefore, a lot of the time people fly these things, they will be at risk of getting massive fines. Now, the FAA and other regulators may say, oh, well, OK, we're not going to exempt them, but we just will be selective about enforcement. And that is very, very bad. I, I think that selective enforcement is a very nasty thing because it opens up the whole situation to corruption, bias, prejudice. For example, maybe you, the local policeman doesn't like you. You know, you've done something to get offside with him. He doesn't like you. you maybe you, you dated his daughter and, and dropped her and, you know, so he's really, he's pissed at you. Now, he could come along and he could basically, you know, arrest you for flying your drone illegally if you were doing a drony in your own backyard. If there was a, uh, the president was 20 miles down the road and there was an exclusion going on. So he could selectively enforce the regulation if it suited him. I, this is it's too open to corruption. Selective enforcement is a very, very bad thing. It should never be allowed. Either rules are rules and they apply all the time, or the rules must be changed to clearly define when the rule's applicable and when it's not. Just relying on enforcement to make a decision on the spot. No, no, you don't do that. So that's a worry. So how are regulators going to deal with the NEO? Will they just go the selective enforcement route, which is a really, really bad way to go? Or will they come up and say, no, we're going to exempt the NEO and similar craft from the regulations? Or are they going to create a whole new category of rules? Because regulators love to make rules. They love to have control. We can't have people doing anything in the airspace without our permission, our control, our authority You know, should not be defied. So I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't know what they're going to do in that respect. I guess only time will tell. Yeah, tell me what you think should happen with something like the NEO. I mean, it's a harmless drone. I don't think no matter how hard you tried, you could hurt anybody with a NEO. So does it need to be covered by the drone rules? Even if you're flying an FPV or flying it with a, a phone, it's still a super lightweight drone with fully enclosed propellers. What are you going to do? You could bounce that off a helicopter. It wouldn't make the slightest bit of difference. And the fact is, it's such a small light thing that it wouldn't get near the helicopter. The, prop wash, the rotor wash would blow it away. It's, it's not a threat to anybody. The Canadian situation has proved just how small a threat tiny drones are to life and property. And let me remind you, for the, perp for the reason, for the, for the sake of those who've forgotten, drones, multi-rotor drones have been flown recreationally now for over 15 years. I flew my first multi-rotor drone in 2009. During that entire time, during those 15 years, there has not been one single death attributed to the recreational use of multi-rotor drones anywhere in the world. That's how safe these things are the safest form of aviation we have ever had. So it's time to loosen the screws a little bit. We don't need all this draconian massive regulation. Remember, the older drones we flew, the old ones, they were far less controllable. Mostly they were bigger and heavier and, and more dangerous. Now we've got the little Neos. Just seriously, exempt them. Exempt them completely. And any craft below, say, maybe 150 grams, totally exempt. In Canada, sub-250. But the rest of the world, if they're still concerned, make it sub-150. If it weighs less than 150 grams, no rules required because the police can enforce endangerment, nuisance, all the other laws. They can still use those to control you if you're doing stupid things. But we don't need to tie up aviation regulations with tiny little harmless toys. What do you think? Go down and tell me, would you support that initiative? We've got to start pushing the ball here. For too long as a community, we have waited for regulators to come up with the rules. It's time we started pushing them and saying, you need to exempt these things. Sub 150, totally exempt of regulation. That's what you need to do. We need to push them. It's time. We know more about these craft than the regulators do. We are the best people to establish a reasonable level of risk and how to manage that level of risk through regulation or non-regulation. So how about we pick up this ball? Why don't we run with this? Around the world, we should be lobbying our regulators to say, sub 150, exempt from aviation regulations, 
All it applies are regular laws of the land. You may not endanger anyone. You may not endanger anyone's property. But it's not really an aircraft, is it? If you think that's an aircraft, oh yeah, you need some retraining. Anyway, that's it. Another video from me. I'm um, trying to keep it short. Um, you'll see on RC Model Reviews, I've just recently reviewed the Runcam Thumb 2, which I think is a quite a good camera. And it's, I'm just going to try it with the new firmware, which has got the fixed ISO and things. So I'll be doing a little bit more of a follow-up on that. I've got the T15. I'm comparing it to long wire radios of 20 years ago. Let's see how far we've come, because everyone's reviewed the T15. So I'm just taking a slightly different tilt on this. Let's have a look at how much progress we've made in terms of radio control transmitters in the last 20 years. It, hopefully it'll be interesting and entertaining and enlightening. And as I say, because the weather is improving here, I'm getting out more, I'm feeling healthier and, you know, more up upbeat. So there'll be a lot more content coming from me on both channels now. Thank you for watching. Thank you to those who support my efforts through Patreon and through channel memberships. Give the video a like. If you're not a subscriber, what's wrong with you? Um, subscribe. And I'll see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.